قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّهَا That successful indeed is the one who purifies this nafs. You are fear for Allah, but you also fear other people? No. وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَا أَحَدًا Don't fear anybody else. Illallah except Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's telling us good words are better. Good words, words of advice, is better than the one who gives charity but followed by reproach. So there are different levels of test, and Allah decides who He's going to test. The first level of testing, of course, is with our own nafs. الحمد لله الفتاح المنان ذي الطول والفضل والإحسان الذي من علينا بالإيمان وفضر ديننا على سائر الأديان والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد فقر قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Today in society brothers and sisters we will realize that everything that is connected to us everything that is connected to each and every one of us our lives, regardless if it may, may be in our social and a social aspect, at home, in the community, whatever it may be, there is a high level of productivity and production. And we would realize that days are passing by like hours. Hours are passing by like minutes, minutes like seconds. And life is going by so quickly and so fast. At such a rapid pace, brothers and sisters, that seldom do we get the opportunity and the time to appreciate things. Very rarely we get the opportunity to sit and to, come, to contemplate and to reflect on things that occurred on this day. After a month and two months passes by, then we think about the actions that we have done in the past two months. Days are going in and going out and we are so occupied with what we have and what is present with us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to all of us, He says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَكُمْ خَلَائِفَ الْأَرْضِ he is that one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has made you, mankind, khala'if al-ard. Those in charge and the vicegerent of this earth. You are in charge in running this earth, manufacturing and doing every single thing. And he has elevated some of you above others. He has given status. Whether it be, may be your status in society, whether it may be status in a masjid, in an organization, whether it may be some financial status, he has given some satya and status above others. <laughs> so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you and I in what he has given to us. He will test us in every aspect of our lives and what He has given to us. 
be it the wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, be it the youthfulness that he has given to us, be it the health and strength that he has given to us, be it the life that he has bestowed upon each and every one of us, be it the iman. We say it in the kalima, la ilaha illallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test us in every single aspect of our lives. With respect to productivity, and what Allah has given to us, many times, hard to say, and this is firstly for myself, we are very negligent when it comes to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With respect to innovation, being proactive, being reactive, doing things, we take a box it when it comes to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to building the akhirah, the next life, we do not prioritize and make it our primary objective, brothers and sisters. And to understand this further, in your life and my life, we live in a circle. And we, we have prioritized certain things in our life. And by what we have prioritized in our life, we will be known, we will be acknowledged, we will be remembered by what we do. This person was involved in such and such. He was a businessman. He will be known for that because his objective and his purpose was solely this. Someone may have been involved in other things, criminal activities, he will be known with that because that is what he do. That is what he does all the time. A scholar is involved in deen. His primary objective is deen. He will be remembered and known for that. Someone his work and objective, and all of us take this to note, is inviting people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will be known by this. He is using the favors from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to him. And everyone, we have different outcomes. One of the reasons why, brothers and sisters, we become delinquent. The Muadhin may call out. The commandments are placed in front of us. And at times, we hesitate. At times, a deaf air is placed on the, when the khatib is given his sermon. At times we see things and a blind eye falls upon that. Why? Why is it? One of three things. One, when we understand the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses mankind, not just the believers. Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind, antumul fuqara, that you are all dependent, you are all slaves and servants, and you are all poor, ilallah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we understand and acknowledge that every single thing I do, I think, I can comprehend, I can see, I can smell, I can taste is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these favors is totally from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will understand the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single act we do before we do it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows of it. When we know that every single thing is from Him, and we can conceptualize this brothers and sisters, we can conceptualize that everything is from Allah, our thinking, our ideology, our concepts, and everything will change. When wealth comes and status comes, we become arrogant because we think that we have earned this by our hands. No, it was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the issues is that we fail to acknowledge the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, brothers and sisters, 
We fail to understand that every single thing we do and say we will be asked concerning this on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. As the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions in a beautiful narration, Kullukum ra'in, every one of you, you are a shepherd. Wa kullukum mas'oolun ar ra'iyyatihi. And he will be questioned concerning his flock. A child is responsible. That child is responsible for those below him. A mother is responsible for the children and the household. The father is responsible for his entire family. The imam for his community. And likewise, each and every one of us have been given responsibilities and we will be questioned. When an employer asks his employee, Oh my employee, every day I want you to do such and such for me. If that employee knows that he will not be taken to task for not fulfilling his job, there's no level of accountability, then he will do as he wishes. In many businesses, when there is no transparency with respect to the accountant, a lot of stealing goes on. But when an employee knows that his boss is breathing over him, that he will be questioned for every single cent spent, every single thing he has done in his office or on the road, he will be questioned. He fears this resurrection this, and, and this accountability that he fulfills the task. When we know, brothers and sisters, that on that day when the trumpet will be blown and we will be resurrecting again and we will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is in front of us and He starts to question us. He starts to ask us about our youth. He asks us concerning the wealth we have spent about the time that we had on this earth and every single thing will be questioned of. We will think twice before we do something. We will think thwi twice and even more before we do something because we fear the accountability in the sun in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another reason and one of the last reasons I will mention is that as I began the bayan, we love to see productivity, we love to see action, we love to see things going on around us. A farmer feels nice and he feels great and he feels appreciated when he plants something and he gains the benefit from what he has planted. He gains the fruit of his crops, the cultivation of his crops, he feels good over a period of one week, two weeks, one month, two months, six months as the case may be. But he feels good. Because the results are in front of him. The results are close. But when it, come, when it comes to Islam, brothers and sisters, when we perform our salah, there are two benefits that we get, brothers and sisters. One is the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us in the next life. That only when we die, we will be able to experience and get the benefit of. And this is attached to many different ibadat and worships. That we give zakat today, we pay and we give charity. Yet still we will not get the direct benefit in this world, we will get it in the next life. And because of that delay at times, brothers and sisters, we become delinquent in following up and doing more good actions. But when done with ikhlas, when done with such iman that you know you're going to get the rewards, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as long as you have the ikhlas, He will bless you with the iman, the ruhaniyat, the spirituality, that you will want to do and give more. That when you feel the spiritual awe, the greatness of the salah you have performed, Right here in this world, you will also get the benefit of it that you will want to do more and more and more. So when it comes to this deen, many times we become delinquent because our results and the benefit of it we will get in the next life. How soon is that, brothers and sisters? 
How many brothers and sisters from this Jamaat alone, they have passed away to the great beyond within the last 10 years? Within the last five years, this year, brothers and sisters, contemplate who is next? Who is next? A baby in the womb of his mother experiences the warmth. Subhanallah. That baby hears and listens, subhanallah, in that womb. None of us here present can remember that state. None of us here present can remember how exactly it was. But the baby hears. The baby feels emotion, subhanallah. And if we, at that time, this child is told that, listen, you are going to come to an earth, a place, a world, that is full of color, that is full of beauty, that is full of other people like you. You will have parents, you will have children, you will have a family. At that time, that child doesn't think of anything like that. Cannot conceptualize because it is a different realm of life. Likewise, the next life, the next life, when someone comes and tells us of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when someone comes and tells us about the greatness of Jannah that Allah has promised for us, the torments of Jahannam, we can only think, imagine, to think of this. But when we close our eyes, and that becomes a reality, and the angels are in front of us, the trumpet is blown and Allah is in front of us, then we will not have one atom's weight of doubt in our hearts. That is how real it is. That is how real it is that we would forget this world. And this is connected to a narration of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he mentioned, Ad dunya sijrul mu'min wa jannatul kafir. This world is a prison for us. This world is a prison for the believers and a paradise for those who do not believe. So what about that man, that Muslim man, who had millions and billions and homes and cars and so many things, what about him? He is still in a prison because this, what he has in this world is nothing compared to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in store for us. If we own everything on this earth, whatever it, it is contained, Yet still, when we die, we were in a prison compared to the greatness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in store for us. Subhanallah. Life is short, brothers and sisters. Let us not waste it. Life is so short. Do not waste it in things that will not benefit and profit us. We are all businessmen. We are all businessmen. And we must utilize every single buying in and profit and seal that comes to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when he has give us, given us opportunities, when he gave us different chances in our life, utilize and capitalize on it. Every single day, brothers and sisters, and I will close with this. Every single day we have been given an opportunity to get a palace in paradise. Every single day, brothers and sisters, as we open our eyes in the morning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us an, give us, gives us an opportunity to build a palace in paradise by a sunnah mu'akkada. Just a simple bargain Allah has given us. Take some time off from your 24 hours as you perform your salah and fulfill the, fulfill the 12 sunnah mu'akkada. Two raka'at before salat al-fajr. Four raka'at before salat al-dhuhr. Two after Salat al dhuhr two after Salat al-Maghrib, two after Salat al-Isha. This is an opportunity we have been given. Let us be productive people. The Muslims were the most productive people of the past. And they can be still. But we need to initiate and do things ourselves. We need to get up and say, listen, this is my deen, I will live for it. I will sacrifice my life for this deen. I will do what I can do now. Because life is so, so short. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding of this and give us the ability to implement 
the good inshallah ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with jannatul firdaus aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il muslimina min kulli dhambin fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafurur rahim His face So beautiful Bestowed with grace My heart just yearns To be